citizens of the Federation and her allies. It is my honor to introduce the official Starfleet ships of... The help of so many of you is to educate the galaxy at large about the history of some of the greatest ships to serve in Starfleet and allow you to look at full-size replicas of the ships lovingly recreated and restored. Please, take your time and peruse this look back at our history. I know that I, myself, have already spent several days staring in wonder at these pieces of the past, preserved and alive for this day. The exhibit will move to several museums and galleries around the galaxy, but it will be visible once a year above Earth Space Dock and Deep Space Nine on this most important date. So yeah, um, like a few days ago, it was Star Trek Day, I think, which is considered to be the first day that um, the original Star Trek aired. Look at these ships, though. That's something to celebrate. Oh, wow. Wait a second. Is that the newer Constitution class? That is. That's the Constitution class from the movie. Kelvin Timeline Intel Battle Cruiser. I believe that's the the Enterprise. I've never heard of that. Okay, I'll have to look at that. And that's a T6. Ooh, I'll be able to get that in nine more levels. That yeah, that's a lot bigger than the original Enterprise. The original am I go I'm going backwards. <laughs> Yeah, that's bigger than the original, 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 original Enterprise. That's pretty rad. That's a lot bigger. I would get that. Holy cow. That's not a bad looking ship, too. I ought to consider that. But you'll notice that I uh, I might consider it, but I do happen to really... I like the colors on that. I gotta admit, I really, really like the green. Oh my god, that green looks really good. I kind of want to steal that green. That's a great color scheme. Yeah, I'm kind of envious. I really like that color scheme. <laughs> He's probably got some special editions and stuff on it, which is which is how he was able to get that. Because I don't, I haven't seen any other defector uh, deflectors gr uh, glow like that. But you'll notice that I have my proper defiant. Um, I had to get like t I had to get the one that I got and. This is a more advanced version, so I finally do have cloaking, which is what I wanted. That's all I wanted. I just wanted my cloaking, and it only works on certain um, on certain Starfleet ships. Okay, that's fine. There's a. I think there might be another person in here too, though. But I'm gonna pay my respects to our our heroes.
So yeah, look at this. This the def dang. The Defiant is about the same size as the Enterprise. Jeez. And the Defiance, <clears throat> the Defiance uh, considered a really small ship. Wow. Yeah, the Defiance probably bigger than the Enterprise than the, than the original Enterprise. That's crazy. Space, a final frontier. This is where it all began. Good old Star Trek original series, the eighth of September, nineteen sixty-six, to June to the third of June, nineteen sixty-nine. Star Trek inspired a bunch of stuff too, like the fact that uh, like uh, the original flip phones. That came from uh, Star Trek. There was also some kind of, like, hypos... There's, like, a real version of hyposprays, I think, too. That can't be... Wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, the Defiant is much smaller than the Enterprise. Okay, that's what I thought. The Enterprise D, I should mention that. Let's make sure history never, never forgets. forgets the name. The name. Enterprise. Enterprise. Uh, I don't think a lot of people realize this, but like being on Star Trek, being on Star Trek changed. Um, uh, what's his name? Um. Patrick Stewart's life forever like he would not be the man he is today without having been on Star if he hadn't been on Star Trek like he used apparently like from his own words I forgot where I remembered hearing this from but I was just watching a trailer or something a clip and I remembered it's from the it's from the um it's from the documentary um the captains which is where w William Shatner goes around and interviews all the captains from the from all the Star Trek series and movies um, and uh, Patrick and I think <clears throat> there was somewhere else that was written down some I forgot where but yeah Patrick Stewart was a complete stick in the mud when he first got into um, when he first got on got hired for next generation Like, he was the real-life version of, um, I can't think of the guys, of, uh, Alan Rickman's character from, um, Galaxy Quest. Like, that was Patrick Stewart, but at the beginning of Star Trek. And then, like, his crew member, like, or not crew members, but, like, his, his co-workers, like, I could see Jonathan Frakes doing this, too. Like, just from how he is. Like even the way he acts, like on on camera, but like off camera too, he's he just seems like a complete goofball, and uh, like Jonathan Frakes probably, John Delancey maybe, like they just kind of like wore him down. <laughs> Brent Spiner, I heard, is a complete joker, and uh, and um, they just kind of wore him down, and he finally like kind of like grew grew to enjoy his experience on Star Trek and then he became a completely different person after that like he wasn't such a jerk anymore it's 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 crazy it's absolutely kind of crazy twenty eighth of September nineteen eighty seven to nineteen ninety four 
the original series if the original series is the point from which all star trek star trek and it originates the next generation was the franchise's first great test while the movies uh, with the cast of the original series were popular in cinemas the idea of creating a, a sequel to the show with all new characters was a bold one that could have fallen flat on his face thankfully gene roddenberry chose a uh, an excellent cast and an amazing group of writers to carry on his legacy uh, kind of picked up after the the cast carried it for the first two seasons <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the writing caught up uh, on the third season it looks like a toy ship because of the success of TNG Star Trek lives on and that is absolutely true All right, let's continue on. Is that the Kelvin Enterprise? Oh, no, no, that's somebody else's ship. No, that is, that's the Defiant, okay. Here we are. Here we are. USS Defiant, baby. USS Defiant. NX-74205. We are explorers. We explore our lives day by day. And we explore the galaxy trying to expand the boundaries of our knowledge. And that is why I am here. Not to conquer you with weapons or with ideas, but to coexist and learn. I remember that. That's from that was from his conversation with the uh, with the prophets. Yeah, that's true. Definitely a deeper, more nuanced look at Federation society. That's one of the reasons I like DS9. I wish I I wish I'd appreciated it more when it was on the air. That is true. That is totally true. Like the newer series, they're more particularly Picard actually are more DS9 style. Same thing with, um, I would even say Discovery is DS9 style too. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why both of them get flack is because while on, while you're, when you're dealing with like completely Starfleet people um, or characters, you can, it's easier, it's a bit easier to project the perfect I was thinking about this the other day. That's why it's fresh on my mind. But um, it's a little easier to project that whole perfect society thing. But when you have, when you're actually dealing with the public, things aren't always so perfect. And I think that's one of the cool things about DS9 is that it was the, it was the first one that really introduced that concept. Um, while things could be perfect, they weren't necessarily all perfect. 
because you know things happen but we still try to make we still try to get them back to that perfection Ah, yes, the Voyager. The USS Voyager. In a region where shifting allegiances are common, <coughs> we have to have something stable to rely on. And we do. The principles and ideals of the Federation. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Because even though Philippa Giorgio was the female Starfleet captain, she wasn't the star of the show. Um, that was Jason Isaac, or Jason Isaac's character. Um, Michelle Yell versus Jason Isaacs, yeah. Yes. Yeah, they they're the ones who deal with the Borg threat. So which one is this? Is this the A? No, this looks like the E. Yeah, that's the E. Oh yeah, during his uh his Ahab his Captain Ahab speech. <laughs> so that was in 2371. That was four years before the Defiance Destruction. Okay. Yeah, Generations was underrated. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, that looks like the Kelvin. Yeah, that looks like... Oh, so we are going in order. So this is the Kelvin Enterprise.
Interesting. Oh, I get it now. So that is, that's going to be the NX-01. Got it. Okay. Now your father was captain of a starship for 12 minutes. He saved 800 lives, including your mother's and yours. I dare you to do better. Wait, what? Yes, they did. Yeah, may Anton Yelchin rest in peace. Oh seven one eight. Is that the girl from um Wait, what? Ah, okay. That's what I thought. All right. Agents of Yesterday. I'll have to figure that out. I'll have to see if I can find that and do that one because I don't think I I don't think I did that mission. All right. I wonder if you can get the Kelvin ships. Well, I mean you can clearly because you know dude just had it. Ooh. That is a that is a very tiny ship. No, it's not that tiny. It's about the same size as the Defiant. Okay. I'll find a way through this. But I won't leave anyone behind. Not if I can help it. I can't try to save humanity without holding on to what makes me human.
That's right, it was technically before the Federation. I forgot about that. There was a Starfleet, but no Federation. And, of course, the Discovery. Heck, yeah. Man, I wish I could get my hands on this. I would love to get my hands on the Crossfield Clash, on the Crossfield Clash ship. The only way to defeat fear is to tell it no. No. We will not take shortcuts on the path to righteousness. No. We will not break the rules that protect us from our basest instincts. No. We will not allow desperation to destroy moral authority. Oh, I am definitely looking forward to the Federation in the future. Like, yo, you have no idea how excited I am about that. Man, I just really, really want a cross-field class ship. Ah, USS Enterprise A, I'm assuming. I think this is the A. No, it's not. Tony. Oh, this is the one from Discovery. Oh, I see now. I see. Wherever our mission takes us, we'll try to have a little fun along the way, too, huh? Make a little noise. Ruffle a few feathers. Wait, what? Wait, what? Get the heck out of here. There's going to be a new series, Strange New Worlds? I didn't know about that. Interesting. Very interesting. So which one is this then? The F. Theirs not to make reply. Theirs not to reason why. Theirs but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600.
sing. The war with the Klingon Empire to the catastrophic battles of oh 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 to conflict with the Senkethi. Why have I heard that name before? Senkethi and the Herc. It's hard to believe the ship is only two two years. Kira Yoshi O'Brien? Yes. Uh, this was actually really nice getting to, to visit the, the Star Trek Museum. That was all I really wanted to do. I just wanted to see the Star Trek Museum. Uh, well, no. Yes and no. 